welcome to worship here with Act and Midmar, Clooney and Mani Mas Kintor and Kemne. We are glad that you are on our online joint worship service with us this morning. And as we did last week, we're going to start with our cuppa and a blether. And today, in fact, my cuppa is a great um, illustration of that. I have my Seahawks, my American football team. And so my question for everyone today, oh yeah, Ewan's going to get me soon, is God has made us in his image to worship and to work, but also to play. And as ministers, it is good to take time away from the church for everybody to take some time to play. So what is it that helps you to rest? So that's the question for everyone today. So Sheila, would you be willing to share with us first this morning? Yeah, thanks. And it's, it's, good, it's good to be part of the conversation. We... The manse here over at Echt, of course, is right at the foot of the Hill of Fair. So I spend a bit of time every day walking dogs up the Hill of Fair. So between us, there are three dogs and at the moment a kitten in the manse. So life is spent doing a fair bit of walking. There's fantastic trails there. And of course, at the moment, the weather has been lovely for walking. So we do get a fair amount of walking. The rest of the time is spent catching up with family and friends. We have family in New Zealand and also in South Africa. That's our nearest family. And of course, traveling at the present moment isn't possible. So we spend time in social media, keeping in touch with people around about. Yeah. That, um, Sheila, we have a lot in common. I love to get out. We only have one dog, but I love to get out with our dog and to walk in that. And of course, our family being from the accent, as you can tell, America. So doing a lot of that online right now. And so, um, Joshua, you want to continue on in terms of um, what helps you to rest? Well, like you, Heather, I'm a very passionate Seahawks fan. No apologies, Ewan. Sorry. And he's rolling his eyes at me. <laughs> but I, I wouldn't say the Seahawks helped me rest because I get pretty wound up when I watch the games. Um, so, but I think like you, Sheila, going for walks with, with our dog, we're spoiled for choice around uh, Kemne. I think reading books not connected to, to work or to study is a nice escape as well. And I also enjoy cycling. It's a nice way to switch off the brain for a bit and get some exercise to help me feel like a more balanced human being. So those things help me quite a bit to find a good rhythm. Thank you, Joshua. Um, with that, Ewan, you can spar him back if you want to take down his Seahawks. So Ewan, what helps you to rest and to get away from work? Well, what helps me rest is not thinking about the Seahawks, I have to say, but the, <laughs> the New England Patriots is my team. Uh, and uh, it's been a delight to watch the success of that team over the last few years especially since my nice neighbours came from the United States to Kemney. But actually, sport is what I like. I like watching, and I watch a lot of sport on television. I also, in my day, have played an awful lot of sport. It doesn't look like it now, but I was a tennis coach and played hours and hours and hours on tennis, court, on tennis courts. And just recently, well, it restarts this coming Wednesday, I go to Walking Football, which is a bunch of, of gentlemen and ladies over a certain generation who tend to forget they're of a certain generation. And once they're on the football park, go a wee bit nuts. But under the new guidelines that we've, we're not allowed to tackle, we're not allowed to push people over, we're not allowed to kick people, we've got to keep our social distance. So it's going to be fun. And that starts this coming Wednesday in Inverurie. So it's, it's a great release for me just to go for an hour. And I was six months doing it before anyone recognized that I was a minister because that tends to make people treat you slightly differently when they realize that you're a minister. But sport is a great release for me watching it. Uh, Dundee Football Club, of course, is the best football team in the world. Uh, but, uh, uh, and the New England Patriots, of course, for that other type of football that we don't speak about too often at this side of the pond. And recently I've actually started watching NCIS on television. Never watched it before. And uh, we've now got watched 13 series in about six weeks. So it's, it's binge watching at times uh, when I've had time. But that's about it. That's great. That's NCIS is a great program. And you know what, with lockdown, binge watching became a hobby for many of us. So Fiona, I'm going to give it to you. Um, what helps you to get away from stress? When I can, I do like to get out and walk as well. We don't have any walkable animals. We have um, we have some rabbits. We just got a, recently got a new baby bunny. 
um, who is very cute. Um, so I, I do quite enjoy spending some time. I'm quite surprised actually because they were bought for the children. I'm surprised in myself as to how much enjoyment I am getting out of the rabbits. Um, and they're a bit like cats actually. <laughs> they're, they're very cute. Um, and what else do I do? Well, I've been, I've been, I've been sorting through all our jigsaws, which has meant I've had to do all our jigsaws. <laughs> find out which ones have got missing pieces and things. So I've spent quite a bit of time doing jigsaws over lockdown, uh, which has been quite good. Um, and uh, I think Joshua, you would uh, particularly approve of the one I've just finished. It's a Star Wars one. <laughs> we do like our Star Wars. That is fabulous. Thank you, Fiona. And just in summary, is there anything going on in your parishes that we should make a note of intimation? So Sheila, anything that you want us to know? Yeah, we received permission from the Presbytery to reopen our church buildings, which is great news. So F opens for worship at the usual time of 10.15 on Sunday the 20th of September. That's going to be our first week. We're going to be operating a booking system, which means anybody that wants to come along, we're asking people to phone the manse number and just record their, their interest or intention in coming and leave a name and phone number. Midmar is going to be opening for private prayer and reflection. We open Midmar next Wednesday, actually, which is the 16th, just for one hour between 11 and 12 noon. And that's going to be on every Wednesday as well. Just as a drop in, if people want to come and enjoy the peace and quiet and sit and reflect for a wee while. So we're looking forward to that. It's going to be really good to have the buildings open. It will be. We look forward to hearing how that goes. Joshua, any intimation for us from Kemne this week? Mm -hmm. uh, just two things. One, very briefly, we're still in process of finalizing our paperwork for applying for reopening, but that is very much underway. And for this month, we are, along with these joint services, which we're delighted to participate in, we're continuing with a shorter series of for Kemne Kids, which will be available at 9 a.m. every Sunday. Use about a 10 to 15 minute service uh, for children and families, especially or for anyone who wants to watch. Very welcome to do so. And that's available on catch up if you've missed that this morning. So Ewan, I'm going to drop over to you. Anything for Monty Mosk and Clooney? Well, we've, we have reopened today, uh, the 13th, and you do have to book both churches by again phoning the manse mm -hmm. but the Clooney and Minimas Joint Sunday School has restarted online mm -hmm. and uh, I think they're currently looking at the story of Jonah so they've had an old Jonah like myself telling the story on video and then there's activities for the children and videos to look up so hopefully people will start to look at that it will be available from today I think uh, online on our YouTube and Facebook pages. Fabulous, that's great. And Fiona, anything um, from Contour that we should know about this week? Um, as far as I'm aware that uh, they have um, been doing a Bible study on a Wednesday evening um, at half past seven via Zoom um, and it's been looking at the person of Jesus. And that is available for anybody. So even if you're not a part yeah. of Contour Parish, you can join that via Zoom and I will throw down their webpage where you can get the Zoom yeah. links right here. So um, exciting opportunities as buildings are opening and online programs are going on for children and Bible studies. We want all of you to continue to keep this um, our churches in your prayers. And as we join together in this joint relationship, um, we'll continue to pray where the Lord leads this and guides us. So today is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it and prepare our hearts for worship. Listen closely. Do you hear it? It is the voice of one calling, prepare a way for the Lord in the wilderness. Make straight a highway for our God in the desert. God calls his people out of slavery, out of the slavery to sin, he calls us. Out of slavery to darkness and despair, he calls us. Out of slavery to the malaise of the mediocre, he calls us. Out into the wide open adventure of the wilderness, where the silence allows us to hear 
his beckoning voice. So come, let us go where he calls. Let us go together. Let us worship God. Let us join together now in prayer. Shall we pray? It is good, dear Lord, that we can gather together online and worship you. The family of your church gathered wherever we are. We thank you for the range of ages, experiences and traditions united in your love for us. As we have gathered, so let us lift our hearts and voices in praise to you, knowing how much you love us. As we have gathered, let us lift our very souls to touch the gate to the kingdom of heaven and feel you near us, around us, and within us. Father God, whose hand can be seen in the work of nature which you have created, we worship you. Jesus Christ, Son of God, King and Head of the Church, we thank you for all that you have done for us. We worship you. Holy Spirit sent from the Father and the Son to bring us into the family of the Church. We praise you and worship you. Father, Son and Holy Spirit, one God we worship and adore you. Loving Heavenly Father, as we gather wherever and whenever we are to watch this, we gather as your children and we gather to worship you. But through our worship we also come to say sorry for all that we have done that's wrong, that causes you sadness. We know what we have done, as you know, and we are truly sorry. Help us now to feel the peace which you offer to those who are sorry for their wrongdoing and encourage us to try better in the time to come. Send your Holy Spirit upon us as we worship you this morning and give us joy as those from long ago felt as they crossed the Red Sea into the, the hope of the promised land to come. For we ask this prayer in the name of he who opened the door to the eternal promised land. Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
This morning's reading from Holy Scripture comes to us from the book of Exodus, reading from the 14th chapter, verses 19 through 31. Hear now the word of God. Then the angel of God, who was going before the host of Israel, moved and went behind them. And the pillar of cloud moved from before them and stood behind them, coming between the host of Egypt and the host of Israel. And there was the cloud and the darkness, and it lit up the night without one coming near the other all night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind all night, and made the sea dry land, and the waters were divided. And the people of Israel went into the midst of the sea on dry ground, the waters being a wall to them on their right hand and on their left. The Egyptians pursued and went in after them into the midst of the sea, all Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, and his horsemen. And in the morning watch, the Lord in the pillar of fire and of cloud looked down on the Egyptian forces and threw the Egyptian forces into a panic, clogging their chariot wheels so that they drove heavily. And the Egyptians said, Let us flee from before Israel, for the Lord fights for them against the Egyptians. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea, that the water may come back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots, and upon their horsemen. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the sea returned to its normal course when the morning appeared. And as the Egyptians fled into it, the Lord threw the Egyptians into the midst of the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the horsemen. Of all the host of Pharaoh that had followed them into the sea, not one of them remained. But the people of Israel walked on dry ground through the sea, the waters being a wall to them on their right hand and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day from the hand of the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Israel saw the great power that the Lord used against the Egyptians. So the people feared the Lord, and they believed in the Lord, and in his servant Moses. This is God's reading to us today from his holy word. To the Lord be the praise and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Hello. The reflection for today is based on one of the lectionary readings which are prescribed for this Sunday in the Christian calendar. The reading is from the book of Exodus and it is, as we heard, Exodus chapter 14. Finding somewhere to put your feet. That's the phrase and actually that's the picture that today's reading conjures up in my mind and in my imagination. It is, of course, such a famous reading. It's one that we all know really well. The Israelites, being led by Moses, flee from captivity in Egypt. In the meantime, Pharaoh and his officials realise the enormity of the consequences of having let the Israelites go. And with a change of heart, they decide to pursue the Israelites with the intent of recapturing them and taking them back to Egypt. Pharaoh's army is dispatched in force. It catches up with the Israelites as they camp on the shore of the Red Sea and the Israelites find themselves effectively trapped. In the face of what was rapidly becoming too difficult, too much to bear, too frightening and too risky, the Israelites look back over their shoulders, convinced that life lived even in captivity as slaves was preferable to what they were now facing. Didn't we say to you in Egypt, leave us alone, let us serve the Egyptians, they complained to Moses. It would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the desert. That was the heart of their despair. And in actual fact, those very words from verse 12 are a really telling glimpse into the fear and mental anguish of people who couldn't go back, but who couldn't see a way forward either. I don't know about you, 
but I recognise something of myself in that picture. And I suspect that there have been moments in all of our lives when at some time or another, for some reason or another, we have found ourselves standing on the shore of our very own Red Sea. Moments when we've been rooted to the spot, emotionally, psychologically, spiritually, desperate to go back the way we've come, to what's familiar, to what's manageable, to the life that we knew. Desperate to go back, even though what we had wasn't always perfect, wasn't always that great. Desperate to go back, because going back can very often feel safer and so much easier than going forwards. And as the Israelites had discovered, and as we know only too well, that psychological turmoil of being pulled in two different directions, the promise of what lies ahead versus the pull and familiarity of what's behind can be utterly terrifying and absolutely paralyzing. How many of us cling to a version of the past only because we cannot picture what the future will look like? How many of us want to follow, want to be led to the promised land only to find that when our toes reach the water or when the water gets too deep, every single instinct in us is telling us to turn back? It's certainly the case that there is no certainty when we look ahead. What if all we see are miles and miles of open water, miles of nothingness? What if we have come to the end of the path, the edge of what's familiar, to the limit of what we can cope with? Because that was the experience of the people of Israel and being liberated from their captivity was no fairy tale ending. It was a move that was beset with danger, fraught with uncertainty. It was a move that took them away from the relative security of how life was, of what they'd come to know and expect and even accept. It took them out of and away from what was comfortable, quantifiable, and what had become over the decades for them the norm. It's a completely understandable human response to cling to the past, to the memory, or even to the illusion sometimes, if not the reality, than to let go and look ahead. Personally, I don't think it matters so much what you believe about the miracle of the parting of the Red Sea. I don't think it matters particularly whether you believe the account is symbolic or an allegory, whether it's literally a miracle, or whether you think there's a logical reason for the natural phenomena of water receding to such a point that parting or wading across the water is perfectly possible. I tend to think that what matters more is the powerful image that's at the heart of the account which is that standing and looking at the impossible, God invited Moses to stretch out his hand, while Moses, having invoked God's power and strength, found <clears throat> somewhere to put his feet and stepped out into the unknown. It's the stepping out that to me is the miracle. When your feet are frozen to the spot, literally or metaphorically, when the future seems amorphous, when you can't distinguish land from water, and when the threat is all too real, that first step towards what will become dry land is the miracle. The miracle is our ability and strength to take one more step, to put one foot in front of the other, because in the act of going forwards, in the act of willing to be led, God gives us somewhere to put our feet. For some, the miracle will be getting out of bed in the morning in the face of bereavement. The miracle is finding or rediscovering hope 
meaning, purpose in life. The miracle is a change of conscience. The miracle is a relationship mended or bridges built. In everything, God seeks to lead us towards liberation and towards freedom, if not physically, then spiritually. And our faith is in a God who reaches into time and space, who travels ahead of us like the pillar of cloud to the very brink of what we think we can cope with and then invites us to take one more step. Faith is not uninformed. Faith is not a shot in the dark. But neither is faith an easy way out. Sometimes faith calls us to acknowledge the water lapping around our ankles. And it's worth remembering that in crossing the Red Sea, the Israelites weren't being asked to see into the future. They weren't being delivered their new lives on a plate neatly packaged. They were simply being asked to walk forward with God. If we can in our lives achieve no more than that, no more than a willingness to take one more step when we're at our lowest ebb or at our most afraid, then we will be the people of God living our faith and allowing ourselves to be led into God's future and ours. God is parting the waters ahead of us and we have somewhere to put our feet. So to the God who is revealing dry land before us, who bids us take the step of faith, we offer our lives today in witness and in service. Amen. We now bring our prayers for the world. Let us pray. Loving Father, we come before you now, conscious that we are but the stewards of your world. We give you thanks for all the beauty and love that we see and experience daily. We give you thanks for friends and for families, for people to love and for those who love us. We thank you that we are in the fortunate position of being able to worship you freely and are reminded that this freedom amongst others is one denied to many. This is your world. We are surrounded by your people and you have called us to love each one of them. We never look into the face of another person without seeing someone you love as dearly as you love us. It is easy to become caught up in our own little worlds. It is easy to forget that others have experienced pain and hurt and suffering, as well as joys and pleasures that we can never understand. When we respond to the world around us, help us to remember that you called us to love our neighbours as we love ourselves, to extend to those around us the same level of compassion and care that we would ask others to extend to us. There are people we avoid speaking with or approaching, those who look or sound different to us, those who've experienced loss which we cannot imagine, those who are desperate and in despair. Fill our hearts with compassion and open our ears to listen to what they have to say. Give us the courage to sit in silence with them when it is required and give us the words to say when they need encouragement. Make us brave in your love. We pray this morning for those who have been broken by life, for those who have lost a child or a sibling or a parent and are struggling to cope with the circumstances. We think of those who are caught up in war, who are as hungry for peace as they are for food, 
and yet they have to sit and watch as those they love are injured or killed around them. We bring before you refugees around the world, desperate people who have fled their homes, abandoned everything, in the hope of finding safety, security and freedom elsewhere. We are reminded again that this is Christ's world and that we are but caretakers. May the governments and politicians remember that they answer to you in their responses to those in need and that they are called to be the voices of justice and lead their countries, putting the needs of others ahead of their own greedy and selfish desires for power. Our lives are touched by those around us. As we sit in a moment of silence, we lay before you any issues and people who come to mind. We pass all worries and concerns over to you, trusting that your peace and your grace will be present in these places and situations. To the lost, you show your face. To the unloved, you give your embrace. We ask you to help us to be the touching place for any who cry out in pain or in disgrace. May we show and share your great love to all in need just now. Hear us as we pray together the words which Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
In life's journey, may God travel with us. And in the paths we choose, may God be always ahead of us. And now may the blessing of God, who is Father, Son and Holy Spirit, rest upon you and with people everywhere, now and always. Amen.